Hello, my friends, and welcome back to our continued blind let's play Homestuck for the PC. My name is Flatless Bird, this is your story based gaming channel, and today we're going to continue our story. But before we do, there was a link that I missed on page 132. And the reason I missed this link is because I thought just I thought this was the the same video of Conair from before. But no, it's Cyrus the virus threatening the bunny. <laughs> Oh, I really need to go back and watch that movie now. It's such a great movie. But yeah, don't move or the bunny gets it. <laughs> oh, let's continue our story, shall we? Hope we're all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. As we can now use this doohickey here. Uh, mouse over the interface button, select, revise, deploy, Fornalia registry, brisk cache, cache, uh, explore Athenium, and alchemy excursus. Hmm. And yeah, so this program was made by Skynet, or Skynet, which I don't know how I missed that reference. I mean, that one was so obvious. I think I even said Skynet in the previous video. But yeah, we got a computer We're looking to take over the world. Select the magic chest. TT, zoom out. Oh, okay, so hold on, go back. So select, revise, deploy. So we selected the chest and we can move it around. Zoom out. <laughs> Just like super zoom. Drop the chest. Oh my god, we're dropping the chest on the roof. <laughs> oh, how did that thing not slide off? Whoa, what are you doing? Ah, sorry. I'm just getting a feel for the controls. Is my magic chest on the roof now? Yes. Uh, I'll try to be more careful next time. <laughs> Get the card. Capture log deck. Philo stack Q. Philo FIFO stack Q. You find your missing stack fetch modus and quickly reapply it to your Silidex. You cannot opt for either stack or Q modus at any time. You toggle between the fetch modus with gleeful abandon. It looks like your dad is leaving again for more baking supplies. You're relieved to have the house to yourself again. It is only for a few minutes. You just hope he doesn't notice the magic chest on the roof. All that stuff you threw out the window for that matter. Yeah, look at all that. And there's a chest. <laughs> Select stuff in yard and move it back into the room. And... Is it working? Hey, do you think you could do me a favor? Can you grab all this stuff outside my book window and bring it back in for me? I'll give it a shot. Thanks. No luck. It appears to be out of range. I'm guessing it's too far away from you, the player. Uh, okay, so that's what this means. It's going red because we're going past this uh, line. Select John. <laughs> You cannot select a player. John abjures the metal sub cursor. Select the bunny. Put the bunny back in the box. Oh, wow. Look at that. Aw, he's adorable. Revise the room. Oh, my God. We just built a whole new section of a room. Dude, I wish I had this power. Open, oh my god. <laughs> Open the Fornalia registry. It's all this Crux Trader, Totem Lathe, Alchemeter. Deploy the Totem Lathe. Yeah, look at this thing. Examine the Totem Lathe. All the question marks. Uh, the, he's confused like in Pokemon. 
You don't know what the heck this thing does, but it does look neat. Yeah, it does look really neat. That is true. Open the Gris Kosh. So built Gris, 16 to 20. We have a bunch of zeros. It seems expanding the dimensions of your room costs us some built grist, but to play in the lab did not appear to incur any expense. It looks like certain objects are freebies, probably to help you set up the game. Wow, okay, but what do they do? I think it's up to you to find out. All I can do is drop stuff in your house and move it around, apparently. How do I move stuff? It sounds fun. I don't think you can as a client. You'll need to install the server application. You should ever see both in separate envelopes. I'm running both on my computer right now. What? Did you get another envelope in the mail? No! Once you install the server and establish a connection, I'm sure you'll be able to manipulate my environment in the same manner. Are you sure you didn't get it? Oh man, I think I might know where it is. Oh, it's in the box and dad just drove away. No! Now that your room is bigger, why don't you move to the far corner? It will extend the range of your cursor and I can reach the items, which you threw out the window for some reason. Good idea. What have you been doing in the, uh, all afternoon anyway? Uh, I was fussing around with my stupid Silidex. But I think I have it under control now. What modus do you use? I like to use trees. Oh no, that sounds so awkward. It's not exceptionally practical, but I think they are elegant. Staying in the corner. The boy, the crux truter. We're just... Okay, I think we blocked off our entrance to the house. Deploy the alchemator. Why is the floor shaking? Are you dropping more stuff from my house? Yes, two more large gizmos. Sweet. What is with all these big contraptions? If I had to guess, they appear to facilitate a sort of system involving car punch card based alchemy. Huh? To what end? I mean, what are we supposed to be doing in this game? Uh, that remains to be seen. Maybe we should go investigate. All right, let's go get the PDA. Pick up the PDA into our capture log. Serious business. The following matters have been submitted in a frank and forthright manner for Pipe Band 413's judicial appraisal. Gray Slack 66. Decide to return home for fresh tie. Soiled tie will be laundered immediately upon return. Well pressed attire. Use ballpoint pen to roll up tip of cloth. Extract pen. Press rolled cloth against ceramic surface. Example, restroom sink. In future, consider requisitioning that hook and or coffee pot. Office urchin. Photographic documentation of incident? Gray slacks. Was posturing unevenly to reach for that hat on wall hook. Tip of tie slipped in open mouth of pot. Duration of dunk. Approximately three seconds. Busy for this. Play a lab on incident. Gray slacks. Need counsel removing coffee beans from necktie. Incident occurred 45 seconds ago. Beverage assessed is rapidly setting into fabric. You grab the PDA, switching back to stack mode so it is readily accessible. The interface is oddly sterile. No hilarious clown wallpapers or anything like that. Oops. You mean Harlequin wallpapers. The serious business application is open. Seems your dad uses it to keep tabs on various acquaintances. His fellow street performers, maybe? You guess the performing arts must be really pretty serious business after all. It's all pester chum. This should be useful. Now you can keep tabs on your chums while you wander around the house. Go to the balcony. Hey, I'm on the balcony now. I messaged you from my dad's PDA. The one he threw into the yard? No, I am telling you, it jumped out of my silidex like a frightened weasel. What are you doing with it in the first place? I'm not sensing a lot of regard for the personal property of others. Is this how you pent up frustration with the problem he says yourself? <laughs> what? No, those are all accidents. Please tell you, please take your psycho babbly, babblery elsewhere, miss. Your bathroom is a mess. Did you do that too? Oh man, see this isn't cool. All this snoopy nonsense. There's a kick in the toilet. Yes, there is. I'm tempted to clean up for you. Okay, if that will satisfy your weird OCD complex, then go ahead. My obsessive compulsive disorder complex? Can a disorder also be a complex? Well, in your case, probably. Ah, oh, that sounds complicated. Anyway, I'm going to have a look at this enormous platforming thing you put on the balcony. 
examine the alchemeter in a cautious manner. You have no idea what to do with this thing. Can't find any controls for it. Having exhausted all other possibilities, you just decide to stand on it. Well, that isn't very cautious of you, actually. Look through the telescope. It's a clear, sunny day. Nothing out of the ordinary to report. At least not beyond the walls of your own home. Grab the soiled toilet. Wow, look at this thing. Oh my god. Oh, it just ripped it right off. What the heck? Whoops. Whoops, what? <laughs> oh, I just threw it in the arm. <laughs> what was that noise? Is there something I should go investigate? No, I haven't had a control. You can keep playing with your telescope. Investigate. Oh, dear Lord. Uh, well, you know, we probably don't need to explain this to our parents because I really doubt our parents would blame us for ripping a toilet out of the bathroom and throwing it in the front yard. Oh, boy. Oh, we got a giant hammer, at least. Sledgehammer? That's all we can go with, right? Shell press lock. Arg! I think I can patch it up a bit. Uh, just give me a little space. Why don't you go have a look at the quick extruder? The what? Uh, the thing I put in your living hole, living room. All right, well, let's hop down the hole. Oh, nice jump. Look at that superhero style landing. Oh, look at that. You jump down to the utility room. Get the sledgehammer and the card. Boink, boink, boink. Oh, it looks like we combined them. Strife Specimus. Hammer kind. You take the sledgehammer and the capture log card, combine the two, and quickly apply it into the Strife Specimus. You think it's cool that things don't always have to be a federal issue. It looks like another one of your chums is pestering you on your PDA. Answer the chum. Uh, let's see. It's by... Double G? Yeah. Guardian Gnostic being pestering an ectobiologist at 1725. John, did you get my package? Oh, hey. No, not yet. Darn it, sure. This is a green box. Oh, yes, but it's in my dad's car and he still is out at the store. He should be back soon. Great, so what are you up to today? I am up to my neck in this suburb stuff. Double T is making a real mess of the house. Hello, what's suburb? Oh, it's this game. It's okay, I guess. I'm still figuring it out. Whoa, what was that? What was what? It was a loud noise outside my house. It sounded like an explosion. Wow. Really? I will go outside and look. Oh, man. Okay, man. But be careful, okay? I will. All right. Might as well go check out the Crux Truder. It's got the uh, the symbol on it. Oh, heck no. You put this thing in front of the door? <laughs> That's exactly what I said. There's a door there? Um, yeah. I didn't see it. I just saw it fit nicely into that groove. You mean you thought it was elegant? Okay, well, what do I do with this thing? Hello? What are you doing up there now? Oh, dear Lord. Stop destroying my bathroom! Oh, shoot. Examine the wall the wheel on the quick extruder. When you turn the wheel, somebody seems to be pushing up from underneath the lid. But you aren't strong enough to make the lid come off. Put the bathtub in the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> Connection lost. <laughs> On the top straight of the driveway, the connection is interrupted. Uh, skull double T. You can see me, right? Tell me, what is wrong with this picture? Sorry, I keep losing the wireless signal. Must be the weather. I would look for a stronger signal in another part of the house, but I'd rather not risk an encounter with my mother. I bowed through her cloud of gin in derision once already this evening. Aha, yeah, I hear you. Yes, cake, Chester is unfaulting love and support. Quite a, quite a vote to hoe there. Though I suppose I'm complicit for not informing social services about your situation. I know. What about going outside? Maybe you could catch a neighbor's signal. Well, that puts us the same palm. Also, it's raining, remember? And dark. It's dark already? Yes, the sun has already had its way with us here on the East Coast. Its lurid glare has moved on to younger time zones. Ha ha, um, okay. Let's hit the Questrudo with the sledgehammer. Yeah! Maybe? 
Maybe. Sledgehammer's coming heavy. I uh, need some help. Uh, TT, pick up a sledgehammer. Boink. Oh! What do we just do? Just start a hole in time and space? Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh. Oh, that's pretty. Oh. Actually, it's so different from everything else. It draws my eye in. Or, uh oh. Uh oh. What is this thing? And what's that clock counting down to? I've been looking at the game pack walkthroughs to figure some of the stuff out that game pack walkthroughs. Oh man, I remember going through those all the time as a kid. Hold well, I beat further. And I try to advertise myself sometimes on GameCube, but not often. That's not a bad idea, but just not something I do. Hold well, I beat further. Okay. All these walkthroughs are extremely short. None progresses much further at this point. Weird. Well, I mean, it is a new game. True. Now that the lid is off, you need to extrude some crucite. All right, well, let's turn the wheel again. You extrude one crucite dowel. Hmm. Get the crucite. Put it in our capture log. I feel like we should be hurrying. That cloud down is making me nervous. John? Oh, your PDA is trapped under crucite now, isn't it? Anyway, it looks like you're going to need this card too. The boy pre punch card. Okay, get the card. Why am I doing his other hand? A shot of glass is expelled from the deck and misses a Harlequin doll. Maims a Harlequin doll. Sorry, not misses. Oh, you see part of its head falls off. Aw, oh, poor guy. Capture log the fanciful Harlequins. Whoa. Things are shooting all over the place, aren't they? Yeah, all the glass just shot out. Oh, uh, wow. You take two fanciful Harlequins. The additional useless freight pushes your PDA to the last card. You then switch to the Q mode so you can access the PDA. More glass shrapnel flies from the deck. Poor guy. What the heck is all this? The patterns. This thing keeps following me around. I think it's trying to talk to me or something. That's probably the kernel sprite. It apparently needs to be prototyped. Twice, actually. Whatever the heck that means. These walkthroughs are horrendously written. Hmm, okay. Well, you are the one with the cursor, so just do whatever. Uh, you think this is the right thing to do. Also, fix my bathroom! Drop the main harlequin into kernel sprite. Whoa! Carl Spy has been prototyped with Harlequin Doll. Don't tell me we just gave this thing life. I think we just made this thing come alive. Oh my god. What is this? That's a lot of flirty leaves. Are those flirty leaves? I think so. Oh, uh, hmm, I still can't understand this thing's goobly goo. That was only tier one prototyping. There is still another tier to the prototyping process, which while we know merely advances this entity through increasingly esoteric states of linguistics. The clock is ticking. We don't have time for this asinine tomfoolery. This unmitigated puppycock? Extravagant hogwash. Okay, stop. Stop typing whatever silly thing you're typing. I'm going upstairs to the, uh, to that big platforming thing. The alchemator? Huh? Try to learn the lingo. Right. Use a pre-punch card with the alchemator. This thing is following me around now. There is no slot in for a card anywhere to be found on the alchemator. The kernel sprite followed you upstairs. Explore the Athenium. Acquiring a Quirksite Dowel seems to have populated the Athenium with one item, a perfectly generic object. All right, let's go back to John. Capture log the telescope. Uh, 
our PDA just got fired into space. Oh, dear Lord. We snatched the telescope from its tripod. Who knows? It might be useful. But more importantly, it pushes the crew site to the last car and make it available for tinkering. Oh, it's... Oh, my gosh. We shot it way over here. The PDA is predictably jettisoned into the yard over the neighbor's fence. Put the crew site on weird pattern on Alchemeter. You place the crucite dowel on the alchemist's small pedestal. Something is happening. It's like slowly moving on screen. Okay, it's carving into it. You set the alchemist to cast three perfectly generic objects. For some reason, expending a total of six units of built crest. These things look completely useless. What a waste. Out of the corner of your eye, you notice there's something in the sky. Yeah, so we spent six to build three. Okay. John switch modus and use telescope to inspect sky. This guy is bugging out. You switch back to stack modus and get a closer look with your telescope. Wherever it is, the kernel of sight. This kernel sprite seems perfectly agitated about it. Um, is that lava coming down to the earth? Is this 1999? Whoa! Well, I don't think that's lava, but it's a giant meteor, and we got three minutes to do something before this meteor blows everything up. Or at least us. You're no astronomer, but its trajectory looks suspiciously head on with your current perspective. This is a troubling development. High five, the Colonel Sprite! Aww. You figure you've left him hanging long enough. Attempt to ingest a unit of build crest. It is tempting because they look str they strongly resemble rocky blue raspberry gushers. Hey! I remember gushers. However, units of build crest are a gaming abstraction and do not seem to exist on the physical plane. There is apparently no crisis so imminent that will deter you from contemplating idiotic and frivolous actions. Uh-oh. Dad's home. Your dad is getting home. John, what did you do with your PDA this time? I'm working on the bathroom. But we are running low on Bill Christ. Revise the bathroom. Oh, wow. Look at that. She fixed the floor. It took, uh, six, uh... Units or Bill Chris. Oh, he can't get in the house. He can't get in the house because of the thing in the way. And just a random toilet out here. <laughs> As John, run to your room and contact Double T through Pester Chum. You run to the room and contact Double T through Pester Chum. Two chums have been trying to answer you. Answer them. I'm working on the bathroom, but we are running low on Bill Crest. Oh man, who cares about the bathroom? Now there's a meteor heading for my house. I see. Do you suppose it has anything to do with the game? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, what do I do? I think it's very likely. The walkers vaguely suggest an impending threat before the end. The already poorly constructed sentences become even more curt and ambiguous. As if written hastily with a sense of alarm. Actually, the dedication to updating the walkthrough under such circumstances is, admir is admirable. Wow. Fascinating. Huh? If the meteor is, game con is a game construct, I think the only thing to do is to proceed. Then try to solve the dilemma on the game's terms. Try using the lath. It says that you can use a card on it, but it isn't more specific than that. Okay, I'll do that. Really, it is a labor to read this drivel. If I read any more, my brain will need to be spoon-fed from a jar, while it blows split bubbles in a high chair. I think I will write my own walkthrough. That is, after we make sure you don't die. Techno Godhead began pestering Echobiologist. I heard you got the box. Hope you appreciate my heroic fatherly perseverance in getting it to you. In my rough and tumble, dirty, white, beetly sort of way. Also, hope you appreciate how many no talent douches had the mitts on that bunny before you. It's like a grubby baton in some huge douchebag marathon. Hey, where are you? Oh man, the bunny was awesome. But I had time to talk. I'm playing suburb and it's kind of a nightmare. Double T is breaking everything in my house. Dude, told you to stay clear of that game. And for that matter, you should probably wash your hands of flighty broads and their starky horse stuff altogether. 
And now there's a meteor coming. I'm not even joking about that. It's like a big asteroid or comet or something in the sky heading right for my house. Oh man, how big is it? I don't know. It's big, I guess. I, I, I gotta go. Well, we'll talk later if I'm still alive and the earth hasn't blown up. Like the size of Texas or just Rhode Island. They're always throwing around these geographically comparisons to give us a sense of scale like it really means anything to us. But it's like it doesn't matter. It's always just like this. Wow, that's pretty dang big. Like, Mr. President, there's a meteor coming, sir. Oh, yeah? How big is it? Is it the size of Texas? It's the size of Texas, sir. Oh, God. Or how big is it? It's the size of New York City, sir. Oh, God. Sir, I'm afraid the comet's the size of your mom's dick. Oh, snap. Sir, you familiar with Jupiter? You mean the planet? Yeah. Well, it's that big, sir. Hmm. Sounds pretty big. I have a question. Is it Jupiter? Ah, yes, sir. Earth is literally under siege by planet Jupiter. Oh, snap. Well, anyway, later. <laughs> Use a pre punch card on the totem loft. You slip the pre-punch card into a slot on the totem left. Above the tool arm deploys a configuration of chisels. Now you just see some in the lot. I don't know how to pronounce this word. I think it's lot. Anyway. Cursing your lack of foresight, you return to the balcony for the crucite dowel you left on the pedestal. You navigate the hallway leery of your dad who is presently puzzling over the new fixture in his hallway. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. And there's the bathroom still here. He's just staring at it. Oh, oh. Aw, Slimer got slimed. And the, the toilet's back, but it's not connected to anything. The perfect crime. I don't think that was a perfect crime. You retrieve the quickside dowel. Dad just shrugs and heads back downstairs. Presumably to do some more baking. If only he knew how hard you work in saving his butt. There's a chrysite doubt on the totem lav. I like how they drew dad. He looks really cool. You climb the chrysite into the lav. Activate the lav. You clamp the chrysite. Reading helps. Ooh. Capsule, capsule deck. Your lav carves one totem. You take the totem. All right, I used a lot to make this blue shapey thing. Now I guess I take it back to the alchemist again. Hello? Technical therapist is no longer correct connected. Ah. Uh. Oh, she's moving the bath up. Connection <laughs> loss. Uh, did she just make it so I can't leave now? Yes, she just made it so I can't leave now. Thanks. It's gonna get me killed. Clock is ticking two minutes ago. A young lady stands in her bedroom. Due to a violent storm, her house has just lost power, along with a wireless internet connection. This has severed her link to a popular video game she was playing with a young man at a critical moment. The young man is relying on this young lady to establish connections somehow. This young lady named? Named? It's Double T! It's on the tip of your tongue. What was the name of this young lady again? Enter name. Flighty Broad. Hey! I feel like that's a slap at me. I'm not a flighty. I'm a flighty bird. I'm a flightless bird. That <laughs> wasn't it. One more time. Rose Lalonde. Aw, can we go back to flight? I like flight. Flight's a good name. Examine rip. Rose. Your name is Rose. As was previously mentioned, you're without electricity. Whoa, look at the storms. Although your laptop computer still functions on battery power, you have a variety of interests. You have a passion for rather obscure literature. You enjoy creative writing and are somewhat secretive about it. You have a fondness for the bestially strange and fictitious. I think I said that right. And sometimes dabble in psychoanalysis. You also like to knit and your room is a bit of a mess. And on occasion, if just the right one fight strikes your fancy, you like to play video games with your friends. What will you do? Treat the arms of the purple box. The purple package's contents are private. No one is allowed to look inside. Just kicks it in. Ride like a flagellum and puke on your bed. What? Oh, what a terrible idea. Thought alone makes you sick to your stomach. Ugh. Stroke 
writing journal and mutter, My precious! You would only get to resort to such embarrassing activity while no one was watching. Those journals are for your eyes only! I like her, she's cool. Get the violin. Oh, I like the violin. You capture log the violin. Store it in the root card of your Silidex. Play a haunting refrain on the violin. Like I said, I love the violin, it's so beautiful. You waste approximately 40 seconds playing the violin while your friend is in peril. Nice time management skills there, sweetheart. T John, tell Liv Tyler you love her before I'm back. Ah, uh, yes, talk to Armageddon poster. Since your good for nothing friend is obviously not going to bail you out in time, you issue words of parting fondness to dear sweet Liv. Oh, if only Affleck could have been the one to make the final sacrifice instead of her stubborn, blue-collar, salt-of-the-earth father. Then, she would fall into your arms for consolation, and you would be the one to make the deceased Bruce Willis proud. Capsule log, the ninny supply bag. You got the ninny bag. It occupies the left leaf card under the violin. Per the tree Modus's alphabetical sorting method, K is greater than V. Rose, look out the window. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Is that a, uh, is that Shumagrath? Flu Thulu. <laughs> it's not a Cthulhu, it's a Flu Thulu. Like, it's a flightless Cthulhu. I like that. Oh, I like it a lot. I think that's a Shumagrath. I'm not really sure what these are. Wow. Look at, oh man, you see that lightning? It was red. Look over here, look at that. The panoramic window offers a view of your yard below and the mausoleum housing your dead cat Jaspers who died when you were young. Oh, poor kitty. Your mom had the structure enacted with a spirit of scornful irony in response to your youthfully innocent request to hold a funeral for your animal. At least that is how you have come to interpret the gesture in retrospect. You can also make out a silhouette of the laboratory next door, a facility which likely broadcasts a strong wireless internet signal. You may be able to connect to the signal from a different part of the house, perhaps if you seek higher ground. Get the laptop. You take the laptop and prepare to make a journey through the house. L is less than B. L is greater than K. This causes a tree to be unbalanced. Your Silidex auto balance itself. Now the laptop occupies the root card while the other two items comprise the leaves. K is less than L. V is greater than L. Auto balancing. Examine the book on the desk. Grimoire. For summoning the zoologically dubious. <laughs> this book is absolutely indispensable for enthusiasts of the elk, of which there are very few. Take the book. You take the grimoire. G is greater than L, and G is greater than K. So auto balancing. So that that's why it's like a tree. Go explore the house. Ooh, look at this fancy picture of this wizard. Oh, that's so cool. You leave your bedroom, having hanging just next to your door in the hallway is a painting of an exquisite wizard. Your mother collects these awful things, ironically. She must know how much you detest them, and there is no doubt in your mind she stores these dreadful things in your house to bother you. Down the hall to the right is the way to the observatory. Perhaps you'll be able to connect from there. Your mother's room is also in that direction. You will have to watch your step, tiptoe to the, the, the observatory. You approach a juncture in the hallway. Beyond the juncture is the observatory. Oh, we got another wizard here and another wizard here. Sneak by. Oh, she's got like a little... Oh my god! Got like a little Cthulhu thing in. What was that?
It's like a woman standing there. Sneak by. The woman's gone. Hmm. This door leads up to the observatory. You haven't ventured up there in quite some time. Go through the door. The door opens to an exterior walkway leading to the observatory entrance. You've seen less inclement weather before. Oh, the things you'll do to help out a friend. Hurry to the observatory. Try to connect. You first put your laptop down on the floor to get it situated. By, moving, by removing it from the root card, causes all the branches and leaves to be severed. Your items are dumped unseemlessly onto the floor. See what you can observe. So by removing it here, there's nothing holding up the tree, so they all just fall down. Ooh. You're in a hurry, sure, but that doesn't mean you don't take a moment to look through the huge telescope. You find a gap in the clouds. It seems a flurry of smaller meteorites is streaking steadily overhead. You're not sure what this means, but it's somewhat disconcerting. Stack the laptop on Grimoire to maximize elevation. Ooh, look at this. Yeah, I see what she's doing. Oh, look at her. Look at her work. You'll need every advantage you can get. Access the library. Not library. Access laboratory Wi-Fi network. We're back on game facts. Well, sort of. Connecting. Unsecured. Service established. Oh, look. It worked. We can see uh, John now. There are several signals being, re uh, being broadcasted from the laboratory, each of highly decent strength. One of them is mysteriously and quite conveniently unsecured. Requiring no password. You select the signal and reconnect to the game with John. Time is ticking. I'm back. Hurry up and open my door. Not that it even matters. I think I'm probably dead no matter what. Patience. You still haven't used a new totem. Huh? I believe we'll create an item on the punch card. So what is it? Like an apple or something? What will that even do? We'll see. I found no evidence that anyone has successfully created the item. And the content of the card appears to be a variable from session to session. In one instance, it was described as an eggy-looking thing. Uh, do we, do we have enough of these building jewels to make it? According to the Athenium, it is a free item. This speaks to its importance, in my view. Now, off you go. Rose, remove the door from the hinges. <laughs> I just pushed it aside. There goes the rest of your build, Chris. Put the bathtub back. Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, the, the door isn't the problem. The bathtub is the problem. You probably should have just done this in the first place. <laughs> That's what I said. Uh, John, take the totem to the alchementer. Got to get those super blocks out of the way first. The Colonel Sprite is getting awfully worked up about all this. Rose, remove the blocks. You store the perfectly generic blocks in your Fernelia registry. Potentially be deployed at a later time. John. Oh my god! Made a giant tree. So we put the totem here. And it creates a giant tree. And it drops an apple down. Take a bite of the apple. Time is ticking. Fifteen seconds. Hopefully, this is like One Piece and gives us superpowers. At least I think that's what One Piece did. Never seen it. Just know from what I've heard. Or maybe we throw the apple at it. What happened? I don't think we survived that. I don't think anyone survived that. That looks bad.
Like, when you see if anything else happens, I don't think anything is going to happen now. End of Act 1. Years in the future, but not many. A wayward vagabond records a stuttering step in the sun bleached dust. MSP Adventures. Let's look at this. So, you got this guy who's walking to the top, walking in the desert. See what it looks like a craft? And oh it's the uh the the the, the um the, the design. Act two. Whoa, I'm on game facts now. Subvert so beta. Table of contents. Uh, by tentacle therapist. Hey, she actually wrote it. Uh, let's see. Caveats and condolences. I'm inclined to dispense the trite, even under less pressing circumstances. Needless to say, I'll forego the inscrutable ASCII banner, which typically heralds the strike and free fall of these documents. I'll also resist the urge to brandish any copyright marks or the particular neurosis that concerns itself with the theft of the utterly mundane. I'll allow other deranged prospectors to stake claims on the worthless plots as all the words burn around them. My introduction will be sparse. There'll be no majestic prose blustering into the sails of a galleon as we embark on this voyage together. Nor will there be any ham-fisted prose whipping its limbs under a bedsheet like a deranged ghost for that matter. I won't set the stage or dim the lights. The mood you see will be set soon enough. Since you are reading this, chances are you have installed this game on your computer already. If this is true, like many others, you have just participated in bringing about the end of the world. But don't beat yourself up about it. There was never anything you could have done to prevent it. The end is happening right now as I type and as you read. I have come to understand that we were always doomed through our collective ignorance, and now further doomed by those who know and struggle to flee. If you're lucky, you'll be among the smallest subset of the latter who are successful. What I mean is, while that game you installed is just one more grinding slab of rock sealing our planet's crypt, it's also our only, your only hope to live. I'm presently faced with the same conundrum as you, and though I speak with more experience, my own outcome is far from assured. I will play the game, as much as there is to play, and record my findings here. If you want to live, you will do as I instruct. My is double T. So it's kind of like Jumanji in a way. So he did take a bite out of the apple. Look at the eyes. Wait, were we the only ones to survive? Everything else around us blew up? Hmm. I, I just noticed that there's like a, pl a play symbol here. When the animation's done, so I can use that to like understand what's going on. What is happening here? The kernel divides, the two halves go the separate ways, leaving behind the sprite portion. Click here for a shout out. Welcome to Act Two. Yeah, Marie home stuck for quite some time now. We feel like you're serious about this series now, so we are ready to give you a shout out. Enter your channel name below to have it posted to the Homestuck subreddit. This won't work if you don't have internet connection. Does not seem to have it sort of way. The post will be published until you upload a video in which you reach this page. So submit. Uh, do I write just my name? Plaisbird YT? Or do I write at Flightlessbird YT? So they kind of changed this slightly uh, with the YouTube with these at things. Um, if I go on YouTube, and I were to 
if I were to type in at white list bird yt. Okay, yeah, it, it's it finds me first. The next thing it finds is uh Ace Zappa's Let's Play Super Robot Wars because uh you know he did it with um I guessed it on his video uh one time. So I guess at Flightless Bird YT works. What if I just write Flightless Bird YT? I think that also works. Yeah, I think that also works. So I'll just write Flightless Bird YT. Uh, submit. Submit. Success. So click off. The kernel divides. The two halves go the separate ways, leaving behind the sprite portion. I want to see this happen again because it's really cool. So the shadow one fell down and the light one ascended. Hmm. Well, that's cool. That is neat right there. Boy! Apparently we got Kratos now here. What the heck? We got a ghost following us? What is left of this sprite undergoes a mysterious transformation. For a moment, you thought you heard someone say, Boy! As if whispered in the periphery of their awareness. It was probably just your imagination, though. You there, boy! Click this. To walk around, use the mouse, arrow keys, or WASD keys. Click on various objects to open command menus for them. A, sta a standing flash program by Alexis Gunkro Benjusnet. Benjusnet. So I can do this. Boy, right, open this door and walk through it. How do I. Go on various objects to open command menus for them. Okay, there is no. Oh, open this. Okay, but I don't really want to. I, I want to go back in here. Wait, wait, where am I going? Huh, let me go back. Let me go here. There we go. I'm outside now. I want to go outside first. I want to explore this area first. This large platform. Good grief. What is it, boy? The alchemator created the apple, or the tree that sprouted it, rather, right on time to save you from destruction. You're not sure if you could say the same for your neighborhood, though. You wonder what happened to your dad. Looks like that's all the way. What's that? It looks different now. After you bit that apple, your whole house seemed to be transported somewhere. Then the apple disappeared, and the kernel sprite underwent a transformation. Aside from the change in appearance, the transformation doesn't seem to have any relevant ramifications. The ghost clown, do something with it. The ghost clown is called the kernel sprite. Or rather, just a sprite now, I suppose. You can't do something with it at the moment. The only thing you can rhetorically do with it is a tier 2 prototype it, assuming that's still possible. Okay. I guess now we can, oh wait, wait, this first. Examine the strange blue vase. It's a piece of cruxite that you carved with the totem lath. When its contours were scanned, the alchemist was able to produce, produce that tree. How odd. Tier prototype the sprite or the thing you said, do it. You're not the one who's supposed to prototype it. The suburb server user is supposed to do that. Well, I want to try this. The man with the enormous spectacles. Admire him. Oh, Michael Sarah. Your warm smile is a shiny beacon in these dark times. I detest this. Disregard it. A Holocron painting? You have the sentiment in common with John, then, I suppose. Wait. Go back out. Go back out here, boy. Oh, so this is how we... This is how we exit. Boy, go in there. What is down here? Proceed, boy. So it looks like I can go anywhere. So let's go here. Left is always right. Expect this ghastly man and his boy. Fred Savage has a punchable face your butt. More like a talented young actor's face who you'd want to hang out with if you got the chance. And also, if you were not a fully grown man now. 
Anyway, the thought of monsters looking at house scares the heck out of you, which is why this movie is so awesome. But the fact that these monsters could also be a best friend is what makes it doubly awesome. Is that John Cusack? Yeah, I guess so, but dang that door be coming up your man cage, something serious. That ain't cool. This door explained this. Rose sure did a number in your house, but you guess she did manage to save your life. You guess. The bunny is not in the box. I said the bunny is not in the box. Why couldn't the bunny be in the box? Armed foes of the deceased? Many people say the second one was not as great as the first, but you felt just the opposite. It was really cool and sort of gross how they hose each other down with the slime that made people angry. TG refers to slime, the films as nasty mambo theater, whatever the heck that means. Ew. Uh, I, I like the first one better, but the second one's good too. Marvel at this adventure in outer space. The movie is... Okay, this movie is really bad. I mean, you could defend it. You're being mean to take this post out, actually. Yeah, I think that movie is really weird. That thing is super weird. At least a tire swing remains unmolested. A tree without a tire swing is like, like a house without a surrounding neighborhood, you guess. Hmm. Acquire this small Persian rug. It's a towel, dummy. It'll probably come in handy for cleaning up this weird mess in your room. Not that it's a huge priority, though. This huge sewing machine. Of what use is it? The punch card seems to contain the instructions for carving a totem of a different shape. Of a certain shape. You guess maybe other punch cards will produce different shapes. It bears further exploration. All that's the same. The funny man text. You should ignore it. Just looking at the cover cracks you up. What a great book. Harry Anderson's The Hero and Mike Cavaney's glowing treatment of the man does every bit of justice. So I'll have to give this another read soon. What? He's <laughs> trying to click on those. Investigate the device. John, are you there? Seems I'm still connected to the internet. Rose is trying to get in touch with you. We'll reply in a moment once they have fully assessed your situation. I guess that's for later. Stop floating in my direction. I'm trying to leave. I am not fond of this mug fellow. The man, the myth, the legend. What do you have on your sleeve there, Anderson? Look at that poke face. He's not telling a soul. Your dad's room is still locked. No, go back. No, 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 no. Keep moving. Believe me, you have no intention to turn your head and observe this dreadful thing. Why is this small man staying here? Harlequin is always ready to serve you with illumination, whether you're reading a book or just enjoying a nice pipe. Small desert tray? Useless. In retrospect, it was pretty funny when your dad pied you like that. Gotcha again by the old man. Okay, even you had to admit, this one's pretty funny. He 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 he. What does it mean, this rubbish? Use this to reseal the opening now. Hold on. Move the absurd edifice and exit your house, boy. The thing weighs a ton. You'd honestly be surprised if the game cursor could lift it. Or at least not without a significant expense of grist. Of all the places for Rose to drop the infernal thing more than ever you feel, what's the word you look for? Oh yeah, house trapped. Is this what the title means by a home stuck? You're like, your home is stuck somewhere? Uh, show Lumpa a suit for future use, boy. The stuff is really dirty. You don't want it. Besides, you have a good authority that a significant portion of it is comprised of asbestos. Tell this turn immediately. That'd be disrespectful, Nana. You just won't do it. Why not touch that, at least? You consider that as a fortunate she is no longer around and witness the sorrow. On the other hand, it would probably benefit from her elderly wisdom now. Wield these instruments in combat. And these things would make a fine weapon if only a strike speck of us wasn't already allocated. Well, that's right, we can lose hammers. Destroy these diminished soldiers of merriment. Probably seems worth it to go to the bother. You quit? You doubt you could get much of them at a garage sale, even. Maybe I'd go be palm pennies and kicking the nuts for a whole lot of them. If only putting the lid back on the crux strider would undo all it's done. A last Pandora's tube has been opened. Where this absurd. Oh, can't do that. Boy, quit all this scurrying around! The last time, your boy's name is John! Fine, John. You turn to your quarters. You go back to your bedroom, tiptoeing around this weird petroleum-based sludge. Now, John, respond to your friend unit. John, are you there? Uh, TT is now an idle chum. 
Yeah, hey, I'm here. And not dead, I think. I know. I've been watching you scramble through the house like a lunatic. You should have answered me sooner. Oh man, sorry. I was looking around for my dad. I can't find him anywhere. Have you seen him? No, I'm sure he'll turn up. We have more important things to address right now. Yeah? Like, where am I? I don't know that either. But I determined that you never was destroyed by the meteor. Whatever you were transported, it saved you from the impact. Yeah, I've been reading reports in the news. Over the last few days, there have been many smaller meteor collisions with people's homes around the world. And they seem to be getting bigger. Yours is the biggest they've identified so far. Wow. Okay. So then I guess if this is all the game's doing, then the point is for us to save the world? Perhaps. Then we better get moving and figure this game out. Yes, but wait. We should retrieve your PDA yet again. It will help to keep tabs on each other while you investigate. I think I can get you closer to it if I can replenish our grist supply somewhat. There may be a way to recycle some that we already used. Okay. I'll meet you out on the balcony. Wait, Rose, one thing. What? You never even wished me a happy birthday. Uh, hello? I was working on something to send you, but I was running late with it. I didn't want you to think I believed Mika well wishes alone would suffice for the occasion. That said, happy birthday, John. Aha. Oh, jeez. This is silly. Anyway, thanks. First, take the fabric item on the floor there. The towel? Why? Oh, well, you're the boss. You capture log the towel. What now? Do as the purple text says. To the balcony. John makes the way to the balcony for your awkwardly worded request. Wait, take that, the, the, the blue wobbly thing. You whimsically decide to capture log the totem, which was used to create the apple tree earlier. John, recycle the grist as was dictated by your cohort. John cannot do anything with the grist at this moment. That is up to the suburb player. Huh? I see. Yes, that will suffice. Rose deletes the perfectly generic objects. Six units of pill crisps are restored to your Chris case. Rose, sp Rose spends the Chris to take... Blah. I, think I, I think I kept talking in uh, Rose's voice. Anyway, Rose expands the Chris to drag a new plank from the balcony in the direction of the PDA. Oh, that's clever. Oh, look at that. John, run across the precarious platform swiftly and don't die. John isn't sure about that. It's a long way down. Boy, I said, make haste on that narrow catwalk. Uh, John is very nervous about the idea. And the strident tone of your commands is trying to make him a little upset. Fine, proceed as your level of comfort dictates, okay? You got there. Hey! With the, the, uh... The thingy up. The PDA. You cautiously walk within the range of the PDA. Rose will tease it. Now take it. Boink. <laughs> Which is what flying out? You grab the PDA, launching one of the Harlequin figures into the night. You can kiss that one goodbye. Serious business. Following matters have been submitted in a frank and forthright manner for PipeFan 413's judicious approval. Fedora Freak. By all reports, more ha most hats removed from, dam from danger. Ties next. Well pressured attire. Fedora Freak, you want in our thoughts, along with Pipe Fan 413 is an available collection of pipes. Good luck, Fedora Freak. Salvage as muddy hats as practical. Gaming house struck by a flaming projectile. In light of fire hazard, evacuating house of all expensive garments. Status of health wardrobe? Submitting inquiry of concern over a cataclysmic event. Pipe 413 will reply. Just one command will suffice, thanks. Looks like you're not the only one trying to locate your father after the disaster. These boy men are just so uninteresting. So it looks like we booted up to talk to Double T. John, are you okay? You seem a bit tentative. I'm fine, I guess. Since I got here, I feel compelled to do these weird things I don't really want to do. By some kind of voice I can't really even hear? I don't know, it's hard to explain. Perhaps the early symptom of an anxiety disorder like post traumatic stress? Yeah, maybe, who knows? Well, if you can pull yourself together, there are a few more things that we could try. Like prototyping the kernel sprite again? Impossible. We should hurry. My laptop battery won't last forever. Okay, I'll go back inside. No, don't do that. How about this ledge onto that car? <laughs> yeah, he's not gonna do that. 
What? No, that sounds incredibly dangerous. Now you're just being a pest. Which turnip truck did you just tumble out of anyway? Who are you? Years in the future, but not many. An unsealed tunnel welcomes hot desert air into its stagnant depths. Oh, this guy's still investigating. I like this guy. He's cool looking. Oh, he sees John with the apple. He sees everything got destroyed. Boy! You there, boy? Oh, this is us. So this little guy in the desert. Ah. An examination of the basics. Upon connecting with a client user, you, the server user, will be met with a control panel allowing you to manipulate your co-player's environment. You'll find that you're allowed to deploy four items at no expense. Three of these are rather large machines and one is a punch card. It's quite possible that you have already deployed some of these items before reading this. If this is the case and you have activated the machine called the Cruxtruder, such that it displays a countdown, you must proceed to section A100 of this walkthrough immediately. The life of your client user depends on it. And if you, co-player, has activated this device in your environment too, then yours does as well. But if not, please refrain from doing anything with the Cruxtruder. I strive for merely deploying it. This will buy us some time to think things through properly and to go over the basics of the game before you find your soft, easily punctured head in the jaws of the lion. As mentioned, there are four items to consider, each playing a role in a process which appears to have a singular purpose, to manufacture objects out of thin air. The designers of the game, judging by the language used, regard this process as a sort of alchemy. This may allow to complexities in the procedure process yet to present themselves, but for now, the variety of objects you are able to create remains quite limited. The items in question are the crux truder, again, tread lightly with this one, the totem loth, the alchemitter, and the pre punch card. I will describe how these totem how these devices work in conjunction with each other, and I will use the analogy of having a key made at a hardware store to help you understand. First, deploy all these objects in convenient proximity to each other. Be sure not to block doors or pathways with them. You can always revise the dimensions of door of rooms to make space for them. But I'd advise against this, or even experimenting with the function. Doing so comes at the expense of Bill Chris, a commodity which appears at a premium cost at a premium at the onset, and one you'd be advised to save for later. The Cruxtruder. Removing the lid signals the moment your light becomes a great whirling bat pandemonium, uh, somewhat resembling the chaos of an especially ethnic wedding. Somewhere, a soused uncle deliberately shatters china on the floor. Muddy livestock is decorated, and then lost track of. The question, whose mule is this, at times can be heard over the din. This is now your reality. But aside from that, it marks the beginning of the process I'm about to describe. The countdown begins, yes. Also, an entity called the Colonel Sprite is released. But neither of these things are all that relevant to the process. To my knowledge, more on these things later. What is relevant is the unlit crust rider's ability to dispense cruxite dowels. I will dispense at least one, though I suspect it is capable of producing more. Given parameters I'm not yet familiar with. In my key making analogy, these dowels represent the uncarved pieces of metal which my, the hardware store employee retrieves from a drawer or a rack and sets upon carving into a key. The two following items are needed to do the carving the pre punch card. It is a simple Solidex card containing an item. There is evidence to suggest the specific item it contains is a variable for sense and decision. The card I deployed contained a blue apple. Yours may be different. It shouldn't matter, hopefully. Additionally, the card, as you may guess, is punched, like the one used with antique computing systems. The pattern of holes comprises data, which I believe corresponds to the instructions for creating the item the card contains. That is, it, that it is pre-punched suggests there is a way to punch an unpunched card, possibly imprinting it with the data for the item it contains, though no mechanism for this has presented itself yet. But the data on the card cannot be used to create the item directly. There is a middleman. The middleman is the totem loth. The totem loth. This is essentially the key carving machine. It will carve into your cruxite dowel a pattern of grooves and contours, the sort of which makes the key unique. Instructions for this pattern are supplied by the punch card, which is inserted into the loth pre activation to configure its chisels. Once the dowel is carved, you may have a totem serving as your key which can then be used to unlock the card item through the alchemitter. 
But at this point, I will diverge from the keymaking analogy and switch to a barcode analogy, which is not a terrible, strenuous straight leap to make. Since the concepts of a key and barcode are essentially the same, one being a new pattern of grooves, the other of varying black lines. The Alchemedia. If you place a quickside dowel, carved or uncarved, on the Alchemedia's small pedestal, its robotic arms will scan the contours with a laser, hence the barcode analogy. This is the machine's way of reading the data originally imprinted from the card and transforming that data into a physical object. Though typically this is not done without expense, I believe. An uncarved dowel results in the creation of a perfectly generic object, which is a seemingly useless green cube. Cost two units to build Chris to make, and yet I do advise you to waste I do not advise you to waste resources on it. These appear to be many other varieties of grist, obscenely used in combination to create different sorts of items which possibly offers some insight into the game's use of the term alchemy. But quite conveniently, there is an exception to this. Creating the item on the pre punch card costs nothing. This is good, because creating this item turns out to be essential. Now that you know this, you can, use, you can in your own time begin the process. Once you initiate it, naturally there is no going back. So best to be prepared. But you probably shouldn't drag your feet too long. As I mentioned earlier, this is your only means of escape. When you're ready, be prepared to follow the steps in the next section swiftly. And so, your crux tutor is ticking. Do this to live. In the distance, meteors fall with greater frequency. The fire in the forest burns so hot, not even the rain is putting it out. Look at these pictures. Check the status of the battery. The laptop battery is alright for now, but it won't be long. If the power in the house doesn't come back on, you can think of one last resort, the small backup generator, the store behind the mausoleum. Prototypes right with Betty Crocker box. What? <laughs> what? Oh man, you're going to use that? That stinks! What a stupid idea! You got to hurry along. I'm running low on battery power. But the cake mix. Ugh, that's so dumb. I doubt it matters. We might as well just use any old stuff lying around. Fine, I guess? <laughs> what the heck is going on here? This party is playing hard to get. You guess that's what you get for originally pro prototyping it with something that engenders mischief and prankterism. Do the pot of vegetable instead. It looks delicious. Hi, Tiny. This is Rose's decision, not yours. Rose, prototype sprite was sassacre text. John, <laughs> that distracting manner. Oh, yeah, sweet. Now we're talking. See if we can distract it. I'll try to sneak up on it. The sprite finds the distracting manner in which you flow about to be rather distracting. The pesky sprite will lose you again. Not even the great colonel himself can act fox it. He just got... He just got thrown somewhere. Bonk! And narrowly missing with your attempt to create the colonel sprite, you drop the master tome. The entire house rattles under the astonishing girth of the book. In the other room... Nana's ashes dump into the sprite, which is caught unawares by the dowsing. Uh-oh. Inspect that hag ash instant. You find the sacred urn toppled again. This time you're quite sure it wasn't your fault. And the sprite is nowhere to be found. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and stop here, my friends. This is part two of our blind let's play of Homestuck for the PC. Love you all so very much. Thank you for anything. Thank you for everything and anything. You guys are the number one YouTube community on YouTube. I say it often, and I believe it to be true. Hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. And I will see you again very soon. But until then, so long. And take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter. And you are brilliant. And you are loved. And you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.